Fake news, it's a pretty common buzzword we hear being thrown around a lot today. But is it really all justified? I mean, is everything really worse now than ever before? Well, I've had this question for a while now. So a couple months ago, I began to compile a list of what I thought were the most important times when untrustworthy information, like propaganda or political mudslinging, had a huge effect on our nation. And I think it shows that it's all been around a lot longer than many of us realized. And it may have changed the course of American history. So let's take a look back at some examples that span the last 250 years. And it all starts in 1770. Now, you may remember this from history class. It's Paul Revere's etching of the Boston Massacre, the event when five American colonists were shot and killed by British soldiers. And today, it's remembered as one of the major things that helped unify the colonies against Britain before the Revolution. But our perception of the whole event is warped compared to reality. And it all comes from this image. Here, we see British officers with evil in their eyes, gunning down innocent American colonists after getting the order to fire. Even though, in truth, vastly outnumbered troops only ever shot after being attacked and threatened by colonists. And no one even knows if an order to fire was given at all. I mean, I probably don't have to tell you, this building in the top right, it wasn't originally called Butcher's Hall. And there certainly wasn't a sniper peeking out that window. This engraving is complete fiction, but it didn't matter. The story helped spark the events that would eventually culminate with the British surrender at Yorktown. And we still go with this false narrative today. Next, we go to 1828, an election year like no other. This was actually a rematch. Andrew Jackson once again went up against John Quincy Adams. And Jackson actually believed that Adams had stolen the election from him four years before. So the two hated each other. Some of the attacks got pretty nasty. For one, Jackson was criticized for his numerous wartime executions, even being called a war criminal. As for Adams, he was labeled as an extravagant spender and gambler who was misappropriating tax dollars for personal items. Turns out, he just bought a billiards table. And to top it all off, Jackson and his wife were called adulterers, and his mom was even accused of being a prostitute. This is all absurd. And something often blamed for it is the massive expansion of newspapers in the country from 1824 to 1828. They nearly doubled. And as you could guess, they're mostly biased and untrustworthy, which is interestingly, something that the internet is accused of being today. And again, this all happened nearly 200 years ago. So this false notion we have of the good old days in politics without any of the fake news it's not very true at all. Next, we'll go about 90 years later, to 1917. The US had recently entered World War I, so the government began producing massive amounts of anti-German propaganda. This despite the fact that nearly one in 10 Americans were at least second generation German. So I'm sure you can imagine some of the consequences. Germans were barred from entering organizations. There was wide scale suppression of the German language and of course, physical violence. There are reports of Americans with German heritage and German immigrants being taken out of their homes by mobs and being forced to sing the national anthem or do other patriotic acts. And one German American named Robert Prager was even lynched by the people of his town. Again, rhetoric, propaganda, misinformation, dangerous consequences. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese Navy bombed Pearl Harbor. It's a day that lives in infamy, and it triggered America's entrance into World War II. Today, we remember it as the tragic start to a heroic tale of young Americans going off to fight evil. But for Japanese Americans, it's remembered for a different reason. This was the start of domestic terror, oppression, and internment. Just like World War I, Posters and pamphlets were created which showed the Japanese in a negative light. And now would be the time I'd show an example. But during all my research, I couldn't find a single one I felt comfortable with putting on screen. Needless to say, this helped foster a country full of hatred and racism for ethnic Japanese. 
And eventually, because of the sentiment, FDR signed Executive Order 9066, and it's one of the greatest human rights violations of 20th century America. It sanctioned the internment of over 120,000 Japanese Americans, and some of the atrocities described are heartbreaking. People were beaten and even shot and killed in the camps, which is all eerily similar to Nazi Germany, who the US had sworn to destroy. Next, we'll go to Watergate. In June of 1972, burglars were arrested, breaking into the Democratic National Committee's headquarters at the Watergate building. In response, President Nixon explained, quote, no one in the White House staff, no one in this administration, presently employed, was involved in this very bizarre incident. And you know what happened? Three months later, he won the election in an electoral landslide. He lied to the people, and they believed him. The truth did come out, though. In 1974, he was eventually impeached by the House Judiciary Committee, but he resigned before ever being removed from office. This event is so important because it shows the US at its best and its worst. We see a president covering up his crimes, even committing perjury. But we also see investigative journalists and the media actively assisting in investigations, helping to uncover the truth, showing that normal citizens can have a real effect on the White House. And even the president can't get away with everything. For the final example, I have a more modern one. In a time full of strange internet conspiracies, I think the one that stands out the most was an event nicknamed Pizzagate. Now, if you haven't heard, in 2016, a theory began online that a local DC pizzeria called Comet Ping Pong was the headquarters of a child trafficking ring, and Washington elites like Hillary Clinton were involved. It quickly spread around sites like 4chan and Twitter, amassing millions of interactions. One man named Edgar Welch turned out to be particularly passionate about the story when he entered the restaurant with an assault rifle, hoping to bring down the whole operation, which he was convinced was true due to heavy traffic on alternative news sources. Obviously, eventually he discovered there was, in fact, no secret dungeons or any evidence of any trafficking, and he was forced to relinquish his firearm and spend four years in prison for the crimes he committed. Again, even in our new age of technological advancements, a widespread lie leads to real-world repercussions. So what does all this mean? Well, misinformation, it's been around forever. Whether it's using a speech, newspaper, TV, or a phone, untrustworthy facts have always plagued our nation. The only difference being the method. So today we have this new medium, the internet. And with it, information can be spread to millions of people in the blink of an eye. But the lies themselves, they remain mostly the same. So claiming we're now in this unprecedented age of fake news, I think does us a real disservice. I mean, personally, just looking at all these events has helped me to realize how lies are spread and how I can avoid them in the future. And during my research, something I picked up on is we often look back at these people in the past as having barbaric and one-sided views of the world around them. And the reason for this is in the past, they could only get one or two sources for almost all news. It's why propaganda was so effective and it created a less educated population. It's also why the time we're living in today can be such a blessing. Today, we have access to information from everywhere, allowing us to truly see multiple sides of an issue. And while yes, the internet is home to a hodgepodge of bizarre conspiracies, it can also be used for basic fact checking to disprove them. So, in the future, use the tools we're given by modern technology wisely. Question the story, dig for the truth, check your sources, and be careful and be responsible. Thank you.